Hey, what's up, Rise of Blitz Free Podcast listeners? You got Brad Gibb here, and today's episode is slightly different. It's not a live episode for me or Ryan or Jimmy, but we're bringing you a replay of probably one of our absolute best trainings that we have ever done. Okay, we did a a training about an inflation to wealth workshop where we broke down everything that's going on in the world of inflation because. Guys, if you're following anything, which all of you guys obviously are, you know that the Federal Reserve is printing insane amounts of money, unprecedented amounts of money. And we know that that affects the economy, it affects investing, and it affects your wealth. So what we're going to be doing, there's going to be four episodes. We took a about a 90-minute training that Jimmy and I did, and we broke it down into four bite-sized chunks, walking you through a couple of things. First off, we go back and we we break down – the backstory, how we got here and why this is so relevant. That's what this episode you're listening to is going to be. And then in coming episodes, we're going to help you understand inflation about what it really is, not what you know the, the general Keynesian economists say that it is, not what MSNBC say is going on, but what how to really understand what's going on. And then the next couple of episodes, we continue to go deeper into not just how to be scared about inflation, how to crawl into a hole or be a prepper about it, but how can we actually use it as a tool to create wealth? Because as you know, that we are about capitalizing on opportunities and even crises become opportunities. So we're going to show you how to use inflation to create wealth. And then we're going to wrap up by how to go ahead and capitalize on inflation. And there are some really unique opportunities that have opened up that are that are sort of at least as far as we can see once in a lifetime opportunities. So Enjoy this episode on the backstory of understanding what inflation really isn't and how we got to the point that we are. And then stay tuned for the coming deep dive episodes to follow. So I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy and and myself on the recording right now. Thanks, everyone. When currencies reset, did everyone's wealth go to zero? No, no. So there were some people like George Washington and others that got through it and not only got through it, crushed it, crushed it and wanted more of it. Right. I don't know if they wanted more of it, but they figure government does what government's going to do. And if they're going to do what they're going to do, I'm going to benefit. And I like that attitude. Welcome to the Rise Up Live Free podcast, where we're going to be giving you the exact blueprint to reach financial freedom in 10 years or less, regardless of your age, your income, or your experience. You see, we believe that 97% of traditional financial advice is dangerous, misleading, or outright wrong. And we're here to empower you on how you can use money and cash flow as a tool to create, build, and live a life you love now rather than having to wait until you're 65. If you're ready to take immediate action, join us over at cashflowtactics.com forward slash podcast. I'm the one that has to retreat to my nerdery, right? And my spreadsheets and figure out what do we really do about it and what we've got to to be able to understand on it. So I'm actually going to be supporting and talking about Jimmy. He's going to lead us through the conversation and then we're going to make it, uh, make it understandable. Okay. So really quick to let you guys all know what we're going to cover. You've seen a lot of this and you get it, but I want to go through this first, Jimmy, can we do anything about inflation if we don't understand it? No, all you can do is listen to CNBC. And does CNBC really actually understand what's going on? The like people on the TV or like maybe the owners of CNBC? Like the people on TV talking. No, the commentators, they're reading off cue cards. No, they don't understand this. They don't understand. Okay, so we're going to teach you what inflation actually is, okay, what it really is, and how most people are approaching it. Because if we don't understand that, guys, you understand, you know, if you know anything about us at Cashflow Tactics, we don't bring you the traditional, typical approach to anything. And so to be able to understand it, we got to know as sort of as compared to what, right? So that's what we're going to do first. Second, we're then going to talk about, well, how do we use inflation to actually create wealth and where this becomes an opportunity. Because Jimmy, are we gloom and doom? Are we the world is crashing? We should all sit on our hands and give up? No, I cannot stand that attitude. That's not very much fun, okay? So that's definitely not what's going on here, okay? So 
what we're going to do is we're going to talk how to use it. And then three, we're going to really walk you through step by step by step. Because we're also not rich dad, where we give you really cool thought experiments without anything to do about it. So you're going to walk away knowing exactly how to go execute. So if that excites you, if that makes sense, give me some comments down below. Yes, that's what we were looking for with this webinar. Okay. Give me a little, give me some comments down below. Yes. Okay. People are saying, yes, that's what they want, Jimmy. So, wow, that was interesting. So we're going to go ahead and give this to them. So our goal, I think I already kind of covered this, how inflation works and how to utilize debt and cash flowing assets to not just protect, but create wealth. And then how to take this on and reduce, if not eliminate altogether, the risk that we normally have to take when participating in this. Okay. So I'm going to introduce myself super quick. And then we're going to spend, like I said, most of the time on Jimmy. I've got a lot of degrees. I've worked on Wall Street. I co-founded Cash Flow Tactics with Ryan and Jimmy. My, Like I said, my background to this is running the analytics to say, okay, is what we're doing really going to work? Okay. That's what I'm going to bring to the table. Jimmy, on the other hand, Jimmy is a former army ranger. He played college, collegiate level football. He is currently, guys, put your, wrap your mind around this. Jimmy and his companies are the number one buyer of residential real estate in all of St. Louis. Okay. That is a, an insane, and he's gotten there in under three years. Okay. So like I said, this makes Jimmy the expert in what we're doing. He's done, Jimmy, how many deals are we approaching now that, you, that you've that you done? Uh, 500. 500 deals and manages a roll of over $5 million of debt doing that, okay? So Jimmy's the one that we wanna hear from, okay? So let's dive in, let's get this started. Jimmy, where where did this all begin? So, I am looking at CNBC with great amusement because it feels just like 2008, 2009 to me. Yeah. So 2008, 2009, I was just getting out of the army. I didn't understand anything about money, but I did have a fundamental understanding about like military history, which is going to be kind of important to this story. But I'm smiling every time I see this inflation stuff, knowing what I know. And like, it look, does it look like 2008, nine to you? It's the exact, it's it's all repeating, right? I feel it exactly the same way. Yep. Yep. And I mean, the two headlines I clipped was Obama administration turns on money printing machine. <laughs> and then US is printing money to help save the economy from COVID. So one was the financial collapse crisis. The next was a pandemic. When I got, when I got out of the army, 2009, got my first sales job, I would come home and there was a show on Fox News called Judge Freedom Watch with Judge Napolitano. And Judge Napolitano is like a libertarian commentator. He's a very amusing guy. But every night they would have this debt calculator at the start of the, the show. And I'd be like biting my nails and being like, oh my God, inflation's so bad. We're, we're going to be hurting so much. And like, you know, I was like curling up in a corner. And so like, here's, here's what I, everybody, I'm going to call the crews people who want to go on offense and people who want to play prevent defense. So like, look, Hyperinflation is not new. It has definitely happened. And here's the great thing about it. Since it's happened, you can learn from history. So this picture on the left is in the Weimar Republic. The Weimars were the um, administration after World War I and before the Nazis in um, Germany. So they experienced hyperinflation because of war reparations for World War I. And it was more valuable to wheelbarrow your currency around and burn it for firewood instead of use it for currency. In Zimbabwe, when this happened, the early 2000s, Brad? Yeah, it was early 2000s. So yeah, early 2000s, a country like Zimbabwe experienced massive hyperinflation. If you see that at the top right, that's a $250 million bill. And the sign got cut off a little bit, but the sign says starving millionaire. And it's because, yes, in Zimbabwe currency, there was very more people who were millionaires in Zimbabwe currency. So this is what the prevent de defense crowd is going to tell you to be afraid of. And like, look, it can happen. And so here's the deal. Like, I'm going to show you how I used to think about this. So Brad, give me like a T and get the, we got a left and a right. That's it. All right. All right what so, do you got for me? So Brad, put on the rich left and on the right poor. So I'm watching Freedom Watch every night and I'm freaking out because I believe that rich people don't have debt. I believe the Dave Ramsey thing that all rich people pay debt. So put no debt for rich people, right? 
Yep. And then they hate that. And then I'm also thinking, well, like, look, I understand wow. inflation lowers the value of the currency. So if I'm rich, like Scrooge McDuck, and I got a vault full of dollars, inflation's going to tear apart my dollar swimming pool, right? Yep. So I was assuming rich people hated debt. They were debt free and they hated inflation. And then I also assume that rich what? people could do something about it if they hated it. Yeah, could. Yeah, could. Uh, so they didn't have a complete locus of control, but could influence. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Then poor people, I just thought poor people had lots of debt and that they hated inflation and that they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. I mean, ba yeah, basically lots of debt. They, they were worried, but because they were the ones being helped by the programs that created it, though, I, I could actually see they could actually benefit from it, right? This is yeah. the way I saw it, Jimmy, to where the rich were the ones we were trying to take the money from them and help the poor with it, right? Yep. That uh -huh. was my thought. And so that has been the myth through the last 300 years. That is so much of American politics has revolved around that myth. Okay, so I don't know if you caught this, but like basically the last 300 years of North American history, it's been that paradigm we just listed, Brad. And so yep. doing what I do, I don't believe in prevent defense. Do you believe in prevent defense, Brad? No, very few times. I like to be aggressive on offense. Yeah, so I started digging, as I always do, and I came across, I reread Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then I found out Conspiracy of the Rich. And Conspiracy of the Rich, it's 10, 12 years old, still a phenomenal book. Really got me started, really got my brain alerted. Um, so Kiyosaki's lessons are savers or losers, but he also is like, wait, not everyone's hurt by inflation. And then he said this, the wealthy want inflation and use it to their benefit. And so it's Kiyosaki. Part of the man's genius is he can do really complex ideas and write in an eighth grade level. But since it was written at an eighth grade level, I didn't necessarily trust it. Believe it, right? Who yeah. Comment down below if you've read something by Kiyosaki, but then have that, that, that same feeling like, well, great. Well, what do I do? Is that really true, right? Yeah. Rather than hey, I'm empowered. I know what I'm doing. And so at the same time, I'm coming across some some more, because back in, I mean, libertarian blew, it to, it to some blew up in 2009, right, Brad? Yeah. Like free, because everybody was wondering what's going to happen when the government prints all this money. And Worried about all these same things. Yep. Yeah. And so there was, there's a, a, a school of economics called Austrians, and they have a lot to say about inflation and whatnot and boom and bust cycles. Okay. So this, book. I heard it on audiobook when I first heard this. I had to pull over because it was a earth shattering idea to me. So it's called the history of money and banking in the United States. And so, because I kept saying to myself like, dude, we create a lot of wealth in this country. We are the wealthiest country ever. And, I, but it's like our history with inflation is not the best. So I'm like, what's going on here? And then the other interesting about the book is like, I knew all the wars because of West Point, because of military history. I knew about the Revolution War, War of 1812, uh, Spanish American War. I knew I could list out every American war we've ever fought in. And then what Jimmy could list I'm, wars I didn't know we fought in. Yeah. But what was interesting about every hyperinflation um, cycle was they happened 24 months next to the start of a war. And I'm like, huh? That's interesting. And then monetary history in the United States, it's like, well, they had to pay the soldiers and they never taught me at West Point, but wait, how did they pay the soldiers? And so we're going to talk about, so I'm trying, I'm trying to get through how my mind evolves. So if you guys will let me go through 300 years of history in about the next five minutes, it'll be worth it. So this is how I learned these secrets. So go, let's start with the first war, Brad. So little known fact, 1690, back in the day. The pilgrims became these massive warriors who every spring would go raid Canada. And then they would take their plunder back to Boston and then they would sell their plunder back to Boston. That sounds like a good wealth building strategy, right, Brad? Yeah, that's a, that's a way to do it. When you win, I'm sure it's phenomenal <laughs> when you win. What yeah. happens when you don't win? You get you come back broke, uh, maybe even dead. So that's not so good. But do, and do soldiers work for free? Not Not for very long. And they want to be paid and they want to be paid right away. And the other thing about soldiers is they have guns. So they're not going to be like, oh, walk away. Right. So, right. 
So the politicians in the Massachusetts colony, they're like, oh my God, we're going to go to the merchants and we're going to say, hey, lend us some gold and silver coins. But the Massachusetts colony credit rating wasn't very good. So what did the merchants say? No, not a chance. And so the politicians are like, uh-oh, these soldiers are going to turn into a mob. They're going to start looting. They're going to do to us what they were supposed to do to Canada. So they got a bright idea. They said, hey, we'll just print money and money. we'll tell the soldiers that is real money. And then people will have to use the money. Like this. You still right? got me? Yeah. Yep, I still got well, you. Let me go back. Yeah, let me go back. Here's what happened, guys. The colony of Massachusetts said, we're going to bring this money and we'll never do it again. And guess what? Two years later, they did it they again. Did again. And yeah. And then the rest of the colonies saw what Massachusetts were doing. Like, why are we staying to this gold and silver standard? This is hard. We can't just do what we want and fight the wars we want and do what the government wants. So they're like, Massachusetts can do it. Why don't we do it? So they started doing it. And so all these currencies went to hyperinflation. They all collapsed. It got so bad that in 1750, Britain said, colonies in North America, no longer can you print money. You are going back to complete metal. That's how bad it was. Guess you didn't hear about that in your history book in high school. No, right, we so, so, so this, what we're worried about right now, guys, the connection to today is the government inflating money has, has been around forever, for a lot longer than you're even told, right? And we have to understand that and understand the incentives of, of what they're trying to do for us to be able to, to really get to the bottom of it, okay? Well, the myth, and here's the other thing, the myth of the prevent defense crew is that when this country was founded, it was founded by great Americans and they were on the gold standard and they treated gold with respect and we're never going to get there. And so we're all screwed. Would, I'm going to yeah. give, keep going yeah. through history and convince you you're not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington, like, so no one talks about this in your history book, but so they're in debt colonies, right? Yep. They have a problem with paper money. And now they want to take on the greatest empire on earth. And like just saying it on, that's what I love about these guys. They were going after the top, right? But they needed an army to go after the, the British, right? Yep. And the army. What do soldiers to want? Yep. Yeah. How are they going to pay the soldiers? So they created a thing called the continental currency. And the continental currency <laughs> went to zero in I think around two years. It went, it started and it went straight to zero. And so hyperinflation, it was better to burn your continentals than it was to actually trade with them. But even amongst hyperinflation, somehow we won the war. So once again, I'm trying to show the point that hyperinflation is always happening in this country and that not everything bad always happens. Well, and Jimmy, where the next quote, right? You called this your earth shattering quote. Earth shattering quote, yes. Because as we, as you, as we studied this and looked at it, when currencies reset, did everyone's wealth go to zero? No. No. So there were some people like George Washington and others that got through it and not only got through it. Crushed it. Crushed it. And wanted more of it. Right? And I don't know if they wanted more of it, but they figure government who's government. Government does what government's going to do. And if they're going to do what they're going to do, I'm going to benefit. And I like that attitude. So I'll read the quote, Jimmy, and then you explain it, right? So this, yeah. stay with us, is a super important and, one. And I know aspect. like millennial superstar blasted me for this slide, but it's this important to have this many words on the slide. We did it anyway. So one intriguing aspect of both the Massachusetts Land Bank and other inflational colonial schemes. So when we say that, you now know what that means. All of this printing money to go fight wars, okay? The interesting thing is they were advocated and lobbied for by some of the wealthiest merchants and land speculators in the colonies. So who advocated for them? The wealthy, right? Not what Jimmy thought at the beginning, which would it would have been poor people, right? And the wealthy were trying to avoid it. The wealthy did it because debtors benefit from inflation and creditors lose. Debtors meaning the people who borrowed money, creditors meaning people that lent it out. So realizing this fact, older historians assumed that debtors were largely poor farmers and creditors were wealthy merchants and that the former were the main sponsors of, of, of inflation. But of course, there are no rigid classes of debtors and creditors. Okay, Indeed, wealthy merchants and land speculators are often the heaviest 
debtors. So who has debt? The Probably wealthy people. merchants and land speculators, right? So historians have demonstrated that members of the latter group, these the wealthy were the sponsors of paper money. The wealthy are the ones behind all this. Does this make sense? That was the, that's why this, guys, this is really heavy talk, but Jimmy's world was flipped upside down because he thought it was the whole time the wealthy would have been fighting against this and everyone reset to zero. But that's not what happened. The, those that were on the debt side of the equation were the ones that could continue to move forward. Okay. So Jimmy, you explain how George beat this. Like, give let's yeah. stick All right. this out. And so, dude, this book was so fascinating. I highly recommend it on audiobook. It's Murray Rothbard, my or History of Money and Banking in the United States. I've like I talked about it like three times and recommended it like 10 times to people today. So let's draw a little colonial hat, would you? So let's say I am an, uh, a wealthy dude and I, I just was an officer in the American Revolution and I know that the whole west of the Appalachian is opening up, right? Yep. And I live like when I was poor in Valley Forge and I don't want to do that anymore, right? And so I see some land across the Appalachians and I want a piece. So should I go back to my farm and trade enough crops so that one day I can afford that land? So should he go back to his, put his rifle down, go back to his farm and save enough so he could buy some more land? Knowing he's also working with a paper currency, a fiat currency. So he'd have to go spend an entire season, plant, harvest, pay Seasons. for all of that, take it to market, sell it to get the money to then go buy some of this new land, right? Yeah, and he's pretty sure this land and the house on the land, he's pretty sure that's gonna still be around. From reading colonial history and reading... British history, he knows that any every fiat currency, fiat means by decree, any currency created by a government eventually goes to zero. So he knows it's going to go to zero. He has a strong suspicion it's going to at least okay. be devalued, right? So what did he do with his money instead? He instead went to a lender who was lending this fiat currency. Huh. Okay, so like he went to no one talks about it, but land, you would think during the Revolutionary War, you think during a war, real estate trading would slow down, right? It accelerated. It exploded. So what yep. was going on? So instead, George went to the bank, got money, and did what? He said, hey, can I have some of that fiat currency? And I'll take it as a loan. And I'm going to go buy some land and a house on that land that's kicking off cash. And then he didn't worry about the loan. He didn't worry about the currency knowing it was going to blow fake. up, right? Yeah, knowing it was going to be devalued. That's it. So he knew the money was fake wanted to take it, turn it into something real, right? And then it didn't matter what whatever money came later, he would end up controlling this piece here. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. And even if the currency didn't completely collapse, he was going to pay the loan back with devalued money over time. So now here was how I thought, here is what I know now. So do the rich and poor again, right? And if it was just Kiyosaki telling me this, I would have been like, no way. But then I kept reading History of Money Banking in the United States. Here was the and, deal. And Jimmy, even if it was somebody 20 years ago, that wouldn't have been enough, right? right. We wanted yes. to make sure this was happening through beyond the current economic bubble we might find ourselves in, right? Yeah. So this isn't like how to flip real estate in 2008, right? There were a billion books <laughs> written then that are all completely worthless today because it was specific to that time period, right? Yes. So that's that's the the shift is if Jimmy and I we had to see it way beyond that. And so okay. so now what we know and oh I got to plug Murray Rosbar one more time. So I kept reading the book and here is the pattern. War, government printing money, hyperinflation. War, government printing money, hyperinflation. War over and over and over again. Uh the wealthy keep getting wealthier. Cuz to the prevent defense, if they're printing all this money, we this country should have collapsed several times several years ago. It shouldn't have made it out of the revolution, in fact. So, so what do we, so we walk away with? What's the takeaway for this? So the takeaway is that the rich love debt. And I got 300 years of evidence to support that. Love debt. Love, love inflation. inflation. And, uh, you know, I don't like to get too conspiratory, but like they can definitely influence it. Yes. Okay. But they also love assets and they're not going to get in the way of the government causing inflation. Nope. They're on that side, right? Yeah. What about, what about the poor? Nothing really changed in my mind. Lots yeah. of debt, <laughs> lots of debt, hate inflation, can't do anything about it. And I would say they end up on the wrong side of debt, right? Yes. Well, which, the wrong side what? of inflation. Yeah. And, and they that's do it. get hurt. Yep. 
because anything they have saved back to Weimar Republic, that whatever they have saved is wiped out because they don't love assets, right? They're savers and savers get wiped out. When the currency collapses, all of that money is, is worthless where good old Uncle George still had the asset, the underlying asset. Right. Yeah. So he could still get wealthy. He could continue to produce where the poor had to start over. They were the ones that had to reset. The lender is getting paid back with worthless currency, but the landowner still has all the land. So and so now we had a choice, Brad. Yep. So if this was 2021, here would be your choice. You can start a Facebook group. You can go get after all those evil rich people part of this conspiracy. And we're going to Facebook mob them and meme them. And then we're going to call our congressmen and they're going to change this, Brad. Are you with me? Are you ready? We're going to get some pickets and signs and go out and 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 start a riot, right? Yes, we're going to solve this by the political process. And by the way, in 2010 and 2011, they tried that. It was called Occupy Wall Street. It didn't work. Yep. It was all the every single time. That's how this group react, right? What does this group do? They just go get more assets. We learned the system, right? And we learned to leverage yeah. it. So that's that's what this is about. Now, guys, the next slide has no purpose other than to embarrass Susie, right? So, so this uh, was us. This was, <laughs> look at how shocked I was in 2010. I'm like, we're about to start a family. We're about to start having kids. I'm out of the army. I'm not getting paid. How are we going to make it through this? Look at the concern on Susie's face. We had Anywho. a new slide of happy Jimmy in the forest in 2021. Everything was looking good, right? Yeah. It's because okay. I know... That the because of inflation, I moved forward. I didn't get angry about it. I just leveraged the system. I understood the system. I started playing the game. And now inflation is like the wind beneath my wings. It's the wind at my back. It's why I know I'll always win. And to kind of tell you guys this, like where we want you guys by the end of this webinar is like when the at my first, I still can't get over my gut reaction when the government prints money to be scared and worried. But look at what's happened to us since COVID, since it's been printed. We've done what good old, like ourselves, we've done what Uncle George did and we got in line and got 1.6 million of free inflation money. So we're, we're super excited to ride this wave. Now, I, you know, we wish it didn't happen, but that's what we're going to end up showing you guys here. Thank you so much for listening to the Rise Up Live Free podcast. Do you want to connect with me and other empire builders who are on a mission to take control of their financial plans and become financially free in 10 years or less? Well, then join us in our private Facebook group where we get to go deeper into the topics of financial freedom. And it's the only place you can see the actual results of people on their path to financial freedom, learn what's working and interact as a community dedicated to becoming financially free. When you join, you'll get immediate access to exclusive training in a private membership area. This training will empower you in your path to becoming financially free and it will fast track your results. This is the only place you get access to this exclusive content. So be sure to join us in the Facebook group now. Just go to cashflowtactics.com forward slash group or head over to Facebook and search Cashflow Tactics to join. I look forward to you joining us next time on the Rise Up Live Free podcast.